Nature family and welcome to those of you who are new and have just joined the family. Welcome to Environmental Law 101 where we learn the basics of environmental law in just 10 minutes. This week we are going to be delving into the legislative framework regulating environmental law in South Africa. So in terms of South African law, in Ebbing, legislation has to be enacted to give effect to the Constitution. So if you recall, Section 24 of the Constitution gives everyone a right to a healthy environment and then it requires the state to protect the rights through reasonable legislative and other measures. As a result of this, the National Environmental Management Act was enacted in 1998 to give effect to Section 24 of the Constitution by regulating and managing environmental management in South Africa. Section 2 of NEMA is very important. It is the section that establishes the principles of environmental management in South Africa. The principles apply to all the actions of organs of state that may significantly affect the environment. They also apply to the actions of other entities such as companies. They also have to comply with what's in NEMA. So there are basically a lot of principles listed under Section 2 of NEMA. I'm not going to touch on everything here, but some of the important NEMA principles include the principle of sustainable development, NEMA expands on this principle and lists factors that have to be considered in determining whether or not an activity is sustainable. Some of these factors listed include the avoidance of pollution and degradation of the environment, the protection of ecosystems and biodiversity, anticipating negative environmental consequences so that they can be avoided or where they cannot be avoided, they are mitigated or remedied, and it also incorporates what is known as the precautionary principle. This is where you have to take a risk-averse and cautious approach in environmental decision-making processes. So for example, in instances where you don't know what the impact of a particular activity is going to be, or where the science is not clear, it's better to err on the side of caution instead of proceeding with that activity. So that is the precautionary principle. Other principles in NEMA that are worth noting, the first one is environmental management must place people and their needs at the forefront of its concern and serve their physical, psychological, developmental, cultural and social interests equitably. Development must be socially, environmentally and economically sustainable. The other one is environmental management must be integrated, acknowledging that all elements of environment are interlinked. NEMA establishes the principle of environmental justice so that adverse environmental impacts are not unfairly distributed. It also has a principle that decisions must take into account the interests, needs and values of all interested and affected parties. These are just some of the principles. Like I already mentioned, there is quite a lot of them. So we are going to be talking about some of these principles as we advance in our Environmental 101 segment. But I also do advise you that you also go and familiarize yourself with these principles because they are very integral to environmental management in South Africa. So NEMA is basically very important because it regulates how certain activities that affect the environment should proceed. So for instance, in terms of Section 24 of NEMA, certain listed activities require what is known as an environmental authorization before they can proceed. These are normally activities which have detrimental impacts on the environment, such as mining, construction, building roads, and forestry. The minister responsible for environment has a duty to publish listing notices, listing these activities that require an environmental authorization. So important to note here, not all activities are going to require an environmental authorization. So if you are undertaking a particular activity or thinking about it, and you know that it may have an impact on the environment, you need to look for the NEMA listing notices so that you're able to see if that activity requires an environmental authorization. That way you avoid falling foul with the law. Before one applies for an environmental authorization, they have to do what is known as an environmental impact assessment, where you assess all the potential impacts of an activity 
and the extent of that impacts the possible mitigation and remediation measures. And then when you apply, you take that assessment together with your application and then the decision maker has to decide based on that signs whether or not that activity can proceed. And if it can, then they give you the environmental authorization. The type of EIA process that you have to do depends on the activity that you want to undertake. So NEMA regulations provide a guide to this. So I'd recommend that you go look at those regulations to see what type of EIA assessments can be undertaken and for which activities. NEMA also provides a guideline on factors that should be considered before an EA is issued. Here again, I'm going to recommend you to go and familiarize yourself with Section 24 of NEMA because that's where you're going to know everything there is to know about environmental authorizations what is needed under what circumstances can you get one what factors need to be considered it is seen another important thing about NEMA is that it also lists some penalties that are applicable in the event of a failure to comply with environmental laws so for example if a person fails to apply for an environmental authorization before they commence with the listed activity section 24g of NEMA is applicable in that particular situation this section basically allows a person to apply for what is known as a post facto authorization. So this is basically an authorization after the fact where you commence and then you go and say, oops, I'm sorry, but can I not get an authorization? And under that section, if you commence with the listed activity without the EA, then you must pay an administrative fine not exceeding 5 million rand. This provision is both good and bad good in the sense that it ensures that people who commence without the necessary licenses can come back within the law but it's also not a good provision because a lot of people end up taking advantage of the existence of that provision in our law so quite a lot of companies they commence with listed activities without an environmental authorization and after they're like a little bit ahead with the activity they go back and say oh i'm sorry and they actually budget for this 5 million rand because it's not every time you actually get to pay the full 5 million rand. As a result of this abuse that is currently happening, it is very important then that something be done around this section and maybe a much bigger deterrent be considered because clearly the 5 million rand is not working, okay? So basically when you think of NEMA, you think of the Bible. NEMA is the starting point when it comes to environmental law in South Africa after the constitution of course but when you're not thinking of what exactly is the law how do you manage this how do you regulate it you go to NEMA it regulates the general aspects of environmental law across the board however because environmental law is so broad and everything cannot be covered under one piece of legislation the legislature then decided to enact specific pieces of legislation governing specific aspects of the environment these pieces of legislation are known as specific environmental management acts so CIMAs are founded in NEMA but they provide more detail and expand on the regulation and management of specific environmental issues these CIMAs are the following you have the National Environmental Management Air Quality Act, in short, NEMAQA, which regulates air pollution in South Africa. The National Environmental Management West Act, NEMWA, which, which regulates waste management. The National Environmental Management Biodiversity Act, which regulates biodiversity. The National Environmental Management Protected Areas Act, which regulates protected areas and the protection of ecosystems. And then you have the National Environmental Management Integrated Coastal Management Act, which regulates the protection of the coastal zone in South Africa. So these are the five CIMAs. When you're thinking of issues that are specific to the protection of ecosystems, then you have to go to NEMPA because it's going to have more specific laws around that if you're thinking of air quality then you have to look at NEMAQA first and NEMA obviously serves as the basis of all of this so you don't have to completely ignore NEMA just because now there's NEMAQA you use them both but if you specifically want to know what does the law say about air quality regulation in South Africa then you have to go to NEMAQA 
I just want to note here that we are going to be discussing some of those pieces of legislation as we go. So as I mentioned earlier, environmental law is broad and there are a lot of other activities that have an impact on the environment. This also means that there are other pieces of legislation which are relevant for the environment and are subject to NEMA, NEMA principles and section 24 of the constitution. These pieces of legislation include the Minerals and Petroleum Resources Development Act, in short MPRDA, which is the main piece of legislation regulating mining and the extraction of petroleum resources in South Africa. There is also the National Water Act, which regulates water conservation and management in South Africa. There is also the Special Planning Land Use Management Act, SPLUMA, which regulates the use of land, such as the rezoning of land and special planning in South Africa. Because all these activities interact with the environment in some way and they affect the environment in one way or the other, they are subject to NEMA and have to work together with NEMA. So they are also very important to consider when you're thinking about environmental management and regulation in South Africa. As you can see, environmental management is very much integrated with a lot of aspects of development, which is why integrated decision making and planning is important on such matters. And NEMA also makes provision for integrated environmental management. And it's also one of the key principles of NEMA. Also, you can see that there's various pieces of legislation regulating the environment in South Africa. The advantage of this is that it makes our environmental regulation pretty comprehensive. However, the disadvantage though is that it makes environmental regulation in South Africa pretty complex and often very technical. The overlaps between the pieces of legislation sometimes cause confusion, especially around issues of mandate so that is which authority has the power to do what or which acts to use in what situation or when you want to enforce a right so that's something you have to be very mindful of wow we have learned quite a lot today it was a mouthful and i know it sounds like it's a lot and it sounds so complicated but it's not really once you start familiarizing yourself with the work with the various pieces of legislation then you kind of start to know what exactly you need to do which legislation do you really need to be dealing with and what legislation interacts with what for now i'm going to leave it here and hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you found this information useful and informative Please do let me know what you think about our environmental regulation in South Africa. What are your thoughts? Is it enough? Do we need more? Do we need to cut out certain things? Let me know of anything that may have stood out for you in this video or any part of this topic that you want me to expand more on. I'm happy to do that for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button below. And if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe so that you don't miss out on other videos such as this one. Until the next video, stay true, keep fighting, and keep the air clean.